Welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am yours truly, Kristen Ostrander. And I am Amy Fearman. And this week we are going to be digging into something. I say that all the time, but digging into, we like to get into the nitty gritty of things with you because that's what helps you grow your business. So this week we are going to be digging into helping you find products to sell on Amazon. We're going to help you work smarter and not harder in your business because so often when we see our students looking for products to sell on Amazon, they get an 85 different directions and don't have any answers at the end of the day. And we want to get you unstuck when it comes to your product sourcing strategies and help you move forward. So of course, we're gonna talk about research and specifically this month, and just don't tune out if you don't do bundles yet because we want you to, to be in tune to this. This is all about research, and we're talking about bundles and different things, but research is still research. It's something that every business owner has to do in some capacity. So what we want you to do is feel like you're not spinning your wheels all day, you're not sitting at your computer all day chasing a thousand different ideas, but no, I have no actual products to put on the shelf. So this happens to all of us, you are not alone, but we do have something that can help you. So we really want you to dig in today, get your pens and papers because you're going to want to take notes and just refresh your memory about how you can go about this because it doesn't have to be difficult or hard in order to start doing research and getting products on the shelf. But before we dive into this topic, we want to invite you to join our Facebook community by going to mommyincome.com slash join us with the code word framework. Um, it's a great community with a lot of other sellers so that you can help get your questions answered because we know podcasts tend to bring about questions. We want to have a place for you to come and ask those questions and get your And answer. no question is off limits. I mean, honestly, if you're a total noob, it's okay. Guess what? We've all been total noobs before and we're still newbies at a lot of things. So we love you. We want you to come in. We want you to succeed. It's okay to ask questions. Um, and you know, just don't bring in your like Ray-Ban spam. The reason why we ask you for your email and for a code word is because we want to make sure that you actually care and that you're not joining 5,000 other Facebook groups. You're and that not you're actually, not a robot. <laughs> no robots allowed. Sorry. Um, so what we're going to talk about is like, okay, does this sound familiar to you? Like, I know it does for me spend all day researching and I come up with nothing or I have a thousand ideas, but no product. Or I know I need to start bundle research, but I have no idea where to start and what to do first. Or, or this is my favorite. I bounce all over from tab to tab. I'm the queen of tabs. You should see my desktop right now. But anyway, I bounce all over from tab to tab to tab, but only end up with dead ends. Those are the places we don't want you to be. We want to help escort you from there to someplace better. You're just, you're not alone. We all feel your pain. We're all been there and done that, you know, and it, it's something that it's like you're, you're, you're spinning your wheels and we, we want to rein you back in so that you can understand how to do research faster and more efficiently with real bundles at the end of the game. Because guess what? Yeah, we got a workshop right around the corner. Yeah, it's sold out. Sorry, you can't come. Um, but the, we might have some later on in the year. We don't know yet. We just haven't got there yet. We're not committed. <laughs> but what we will tell you is in these workshops, our groups of people that come to our workshops are making bundles, successful, profitable bundles based on the research that they do within less than half a day. So literally the afternoon of our workshops is spent in groups creating bundles from start to finish using the framework. So it actually is possible. These are not researched ahead of time. People are sitting down to the table for the very first time looking at a catalog and with a group of people making a bundle together. So if they can do it in a half, in a, half a day, so can you. So we're trying to give you a little bit of a place to start so that you can stop spinning your wheels and actually end with results. Now, if that sounds like something you're interested in, we're sold out now, but you can head over to mommyincome.com workshop to learn more and to get on the waiting list for when we open up new seats if we do them this year. Yeah, waiting list. Usually those people get first crack at what we release before we do it to the public. So if you really want to come to a workshop, um, whenever and however we decide to host the next ones, we don't know yet. But if we do, um, the wait list gets to hear about it first. So if you're if you're wanting to do that, make sure you go to mommyincome.com slash workshop, join a workshop. But today we're going to focus on something. You need to ask yourself some of these questions. Number one, when you sit down to do research, you've got to have a rhyme and a reason. We don't just sit down and start staring at the screen and spinning our wheels going, hmm, what do I do next? I don't really know. You've got to have a plan. 
You do have to have a plan. The first question is, do I have a niche to focus on? So often we see people sit down and automatically go to Amazon to see what sells best on Amazon. Uh, that's not the direction we encourage you to go. We actually encourage you to go nowhere near Amazon to start. The reason being is you are only limiting yourself to a very small window of what's available for sale and what actually sells well on Amazon. And we want to open you up to seeing more things, but you want to come in and have a plan, understanding what niche you're going to focus on. I'm a rock climber, right? That's crazy to me still. I'm a rock climber. I climb every week. I know a whole heck of a lot about rock climbing and rock climbing gear. I'm not but going to go and start something start. on fishing exactly. because I can't fish to save my life. So many people get this shiny object syndrome and they start changing trends and things like that. Look, we've said this a million times. We're going to say it again. Amy can totally do rock climbing and look at the niche and look at the products and market that to people because she knows the pain points of the people who would buy those. Me, I have no clue. No clue. It's not that I'm not capable. It's just never been in my wheelhouse. I climbed the rock a, a couple times at the gym that they have, and it goes up to about 30 feet, and that's about all I'm going to do, and I'm already shaking in my boots. So no thanks. Not for me. But you want to talk martial arts. You want to talk black belts. You want to talk about working out for, for you know, I, I have a black belt in Taekwondo mixed martial arts in case nobody knew that. But if you, but I do know a thing or two about that. So why would, I would never start with rock climbing. Like, that's what she knows. So stop chasing trends. Stop chasing shiny objects and stop making the excuse that everything is saturated and there's not room for you. That is a bunch of BS and there's plenty of room and plenty of niches out there. Not everything is saturated. Not everything is, you know, the doors aren't closed and the sky's not falling. Not everything is toys, 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 toys. This is one we always go back to because everybody thinks, well, I'll just sell toys because everybody needs toys. Toys always sell. Not really. There's people out there that don't have any kids and their kids don't have any kids. They don't have grandkids or they're young or they're millennials. I mean, they don't care about toys. They're buying, you know, subscription boxes and things like that. Like who knows? But the reality is you need to find some sort of niche. This does not have to be complicated. How? We just gave you two examples from our own lives. How do you find a niche? First, you have to think about your knowledge bank. And I know. You've what is between thing. your two ears? You've got to take the time to sit down and think about what you've also been successful with in the past. Open up your Amazon account. And if you've been selling for longer than three months, even if you've been selling for three months, you can still do this. But if you've been selling even over a year, go back to last year at this date and time, in March of 2019, and look at what you sold last March in 2019. I bet you'll be surprised. I bet there's things that you forgot about. I bet, and look at those things first and say, what have I been successful with with single unit items? And how can I turn that into a more of a bundle opportunity? It gives you a place to start because you saw what the possibilities are there. It's, it's not saying, oh, I sold this kind of hot sauce last year. It doesn't say sell that kind of hot sauce again. It says this did really well. What about this product did really well? And following that research trail, it gives you a starting block based on knowledge you've already collected. One of the places that I started when I was on Amazon, I sold a whole heck of a lot of American Girl stuff used on eBay when I started there. So when I found at a trade show, an American girl, it wasn't American girl, it's 18 inch doll, girl, dolly and me, bracelet for the doll, bracelet for the girl, I was like, that will sell. No question that that will sell because I had this knowledge bank of what people were willing to spend on used American girl doll toys. Exactly. And you know, if you know that, you know, you happen to have someone in the age group between six and 10 years old where they love this stuff. I mean, the matching outfits for these dolls and people, even if they're not made by American Girl, is still like a hit. Like, you know what I mean? So using your knowledge bank, you have a knowledge bank. If you look at me and say, I've never done retail. I don't have a knowledge bank. I have no idea where to start. I'm just going to go look up best selling categories on Amazon. BS. Okay. Do you have hair? Yes, you have hair. Some of you have hair. Maybe some of you are bald. <laughs> that's okay too. Hair, but that's okay too. But even if you don't, then you have you're bald. And do you know about the products you use to keep that shiny little head bald and all the shaving stuff that you might need to do? I mean, I've seen people straight razor their hair. It's amazing. Like, um, but I have hair. I have curly hair. I have white girl curly hair, which is different than African American curly hair. So I have tried millions and millions of products to make sure that I get this kind of fabulousness every single day. I love my hair. It's great, but I take good care of it. And I use expensive products, but I didn't always. I used to use other stuff. So you do have a knowledge bank. 
So you do have something, whether you have kids or no kids, whether you're older or younger, you do have places and things that you know about that products are associated with your knowledge. And that's, it doesn't have to be retail based knowledge. Everything that you do has a product associated with it and utilize that information and move from there and start that. And you'll be surprised. I've done research in knowledge banks that I don't end up with information and selling products in that knowledge bank, but that research took me to another niche that I hadn't considered that was similar to when I had enough knowledge. And so it can take you in a variety of directions and giving yourself a starting block. That's a foundation that feels really solid to you because you know, the pain points, you know, the products, it gives you a better jumping off point than something that you are unsure of to be able to bundle or even sell single items in. And then the next thing that this naturally goes into is, okay, so you sat down even for a 15 minute hustle. You don't know about 15 minute hustles. Go to uh, 15 minute hustle.com and download their ebook that we wrote about 15 minute hustle, but spend your 15 minute hustle and just write down some stuff you know about what, look at your own purchase history on Amazon and start looking at those products. What are you buying? Are you into rock climbing or martial arts or horseback riding or painting? Like my new thing is painting and I love painting and there's lots and lots of products to buy out there. And someone please, for the love of God, create a bundle for painting so that I don't have to keep buying all the stuff separately. Anyway. That's your niche, go, go for it. If you're a painter, fine, sell the supplies, whatever it is. Now, find a wholesaler in that niche and open an account or ask for a catalog. Now, I know that sounds really simple, but guess what? It actually is. Just find it. You know this thing called Google? Have you heard of Google? Amy, have you heard of Google? No, oh wait, yeah, I have. Have you heard of Google? Sometimes I wonder when they come to the Facebook group and ask things that they could have asked Google faster, but no, I'm not throwing shade here. Okay. Maybe just a little shade, but the reality is that like you can go to Google and look for acrylic paint manufacturers and find people or who are go to the art supply store and look on the back of the package. We teach this in this find a hundred wholesalers by noon today. You can find that actually right now. Um, mommyincome.com slash 100. And you can one find zero zero one zero zero and you can find hundreds of wholesalers by noon today. It's a free video. It walks you through how to find wholesalers. So don't come to us and say, I can't find any wholesalers. We're going to tell you BS. We showed you a free way to do it. There's no excuses. So now you know your knowledge bank. You spent a 15 minute hustle figuring out some products you might want to consider focusing on. Don't go to Amazon yet. None of us mentioned Amazon yet. We're talking knowledge bank. And now we're talking about writing down products associated with things you know about because why, why do we start there? because it's easier to sell bundles and products to someone when you know what they need. It's easier to write a listing for something when you know this will solve this problem, this problem, and this problem. Amy knows about blisters on hands and feet and probably other places because you have harnesses and things. And I'm sure that there's products associated with these things. And you I can know tell who... Kristen knows nothing about rock climbing when she says stuff like that because they make you me wear laugh. Harness. I know you use some stuff on your hands. I know you wear gloves and certain special shoes. That's all I know. Um, I've seen her. She's a badass. Like you should see her rock climbing at some point. But the reality is there's products associated to solve problems for those things. Like, you know, whatever that may be, like you have this knowledge. So, it, so, and then there's a wholesaler that sells products that meets that. So you're, you're out of excuses. So now you've contacted wholesalers because we gave you a way to do that. Now you have catalogs. So now we're talking a little bit more to our advanced sellers, all you wholesale bundlers that are already doing this already. We're talking to you now. So stop tuning out for a second and focus on what we're saying. Do you already have catalogs at your house? If the answer is yes, or on your computer or digitally, if the answer is yes, stop gathering more catalogs. Please, for all things, stop gathering more catalogs. You have, we see this time and time again. I have this stack full of catalogs. Is that stack full of catalogs helping you find products or is it actually hindering you because you have a stack full of catalogs and that whole idea is so overwhelming you don't know where to start? I would bet all my money that you have catalogs that you're currently purchasing from that could you could purchase more from. You just haven't put the research in to exhaust all the options. How do I know this? Because I do it. And so I'm asking you to not to because recently I refocused. I refocused after actually when we went to Dallas and I got some more catalogs and I realized I put them on the shelf in a closet and I went back to my best selling catalogs and I said, you know what? There's pages and pages and pages of things in this catalog already that I haven't explored. I explored a specific niche and I've been focusing on that and I haven't looked at the rest of the catalog. Guess what? Did you know 
that if you order more from one company, the options for deeper discounts or free freight or um, better prices are higher. If you spend $5,000 a month on inventory, but you spend it all with one vendor or one or two vendors, you're gonna get bigger discounts. It's just the way it works. It's a volume game, people. How do you think Amazon gets better prices than you? Because their pockets are deeper. So if you're spending more money with one vendor, how much easier it would be to reorder and place orders and do bundles if you have one or two vendors versus 10 or 20. And there's a couple of reasons for that. So not only are you saving money, not only are you only having two vendors or you know a handful of vendors to deal with versus think about the time management that it ha- when you have 15 to 20 different vendors with different lead times, with different rules and restrictions and all of that. It's a lot easier the less you have. So focusing on what you already have. You also have the relationship that you can continue to build with that vendor, right? They have this relationship you started, you've ordered a couple products, the more you buy, they're going to be like, how can I help you more? Right. They want you to spend more money with them. I know it happens once a month for me, just to be honest, there's a couple, there's two vendors that I have that about once a month, I think it's part of their process is that they call clients. They're like, basically, how can we help you spend more money with us? And when I get those calls, I'll say, here's what you do. I'm focusing on these products. Tell me products outside of this niche or this specific product line that also do well. And then it gives me a place to start researching, right? Because I've already explored it, exploited all this whole niche over here. But they say, well, we've got these products. We've got these products. Stop closing your mind. If they've got clothing in there, have you done the research? Just don't dismiss it because you're like, I don't like clothing or returns or I'm scared. Like, why not? It's already there. And they're already telling you these are best sellers. So why not build a bundle around what they're telling you already does good? Yeah. I mean, it goes from selling in categories that you don't like, or, I mean, Kristen's told the story of if it's ugly and you would never actually own this thing, why would I, why would I sell it? Because other people like it and other people will spend money on it. Don't close the doors because you're putting your blinders up. That's where having that relationship with your rep is really going to help. So those catalogs, I mean, guys, some catalogs are this big. I can guarantee that you have catalogs, whether they're this big or this big, that you have not spent any time. For those of you on the podcast, itty bitty versus ginormous. Phone book style, old school phone book style of of your catalogs. We have some of those and some of them are actually my favorite. Why? Because your lazy competition is is sitting on that phone book like Amy is in her car. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) Whatever. She had to sit on something. Was it a phone book or a piece of foam or something when you drove your first car? Okay. (laughs) Just bringing that story back up because it's so funny. Like Amy is all of it. So the funniest part for those of you who have never met us in person, I am 4'11 and Kristen is 5'1". So the fact that she can make fun of me for being a short person (laughs) sitting on a cushion makes me laugh. It does because literally I'm only two inches taller. So that really doesn't matter. But it's funny that she had to tell the story because I could picture little old Amy trying to drive a car and she had to sit on a phone book because she couldn't, couldn't see over the steering wheel. <laughs> That's how I feel my husband's truck, just saying. But um, so this is how you work smarter. So you're looking at all previous orders. A lot of people are like, oh, I need to go to a trade show and I need to get more catalogs. Actually, you don't. Like you could probably survive with two or three. Now, yes. I hear all the the people that are experienced bundlers like, Kristen, Amy, in your course, you tell us to choose multiple products from multiple vendors. Yes, we didn't say five or six different vendors. Why? Because the likelihood of things getting discontinued is higher the more products and the more vendors you work with. So if you can exhaust one entire vendor and literally if you have to sell 90% of their catalog, it makes it faster and easier. That's sending one PO people, not five not worried about who's shipping what when, sorry, I'm like hitting my microphone here. Um, Not who's worried about shipping what when and what's coming in what, it's all one vendor. How easy would that be? Now mix it with one other vendor or your custom made product that we also teach in the course, but mix that with, have you exhausted? Look at the catalog and start with the new section and start with step three of the framework. You've already picked a niche, you've picked a catalog, you picked a page, now start with picking a page and going to step four of the framework. Just do the process, even if you don't care about it, because you already have access. You've already been ordering from them. You know what their process is. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. And there's a lot of not, not a lot of unknowns anymore. Just do it. And just do it. We give you the framework and the process to be able to go through and do that research. It's an account. You also, because it's already an existing rep, you have the ability to say, I'm looking into this. This is what the research is telling you. What can you tell me? I actually had a, I was at a trade show floor once and I was looking at this product and looking at it and doing some, a little bit of 
research on the fly and I talked to her. I'm like, what do you think about this? She goes, don't buy it. It doesn't sell. It won't move. I was like, thank you for your honesty because that's, you, you think they're salespeople. They just want to sell to you. No, they will tell you if things aren't moving because they want you to come back for repeat orders. It does them no good if you buy once and then never buy from them again. They want to build that relationship so you're buying more and more and more consistently from them. And what you don't realize is a lot of sales reps in these companies, they, they work on, they might have a regular salary, but they get bonuses and commissions for higher sales. That's when people call us. We actually asked one of our reps once. We're like, okay, so is this a reason why you're always filing up because you like work on commission? And she's like, well, I have a base salary, but yes, the more my customers buy, the more I earn. So I'm persistent with them placing orders because that helps her bottom line. So that's good to know because they want you to do well. Like the vendor that told Amy the truth, like, don't buy this. It won't move. Like that's an honesty factor. So that's someone saying, okay, I had one of my reps tell me, you have this on order, but I already know this is going to be discontinued in about three months. Do you still want it? And my answer was, heck no. So thank you for telling me that because I didn't want to establish a new bundle and then it be discontinued in three months. That's a waste of my time. And she knew that because she knows I order things for bundles. And so that relationship is fun, is interesting. We're going to actually have a whole show about that soon and how to build those relationships and what to say to them and what to ask and how to literally, I know people are phone terrified these days. Everyone's texting, everyone's emailing, no one's picking up the phone anymore. But I tell you what, phone conversations are faster. They're more communicative. You can get a lot, th a lot more things done. When it's a lot easier to get a yes when you're having a phone conversation than an email. It's a lot easier for a sales rep to say no or ignore it in an email than it is to come through as a phone call. Phone conversations are more productive. They can actually ask questions quickly back and forth to have a better understanding of what the heck it is you're talking about. And that has always been a benefit. So you have a catalog, whether it's 50 pages or 500 pages, don't grab and constantly be getting more catalogs when you haven't exhausted the one you've got. Yes, there are going to be sections. We have one catalog that has a section that has a black page that says adult content only beyond this point. I was like, well, that's interesting. So not safe for work. <laughs> it's like, we will not like, we, maybe we'll go there. Maybe we won't, but that's a whole, like go through the catalog, figure out the parts that you want, but don't just leave it. I don't want to sell that. There are going to be things, Susie, Kristen's partner, definitely has some things that she says, I'm not going, I'm not okay with our business selling that. And that's totally legit and fine. But don't give up on things that could be potential sellers for you just because you don't want to do the work. Right. I mean, and just because you're, maybe you're just one of those, which we get because like, I love new ideas and shiny objects, just like everybody else. And you get a brand new catalog. Like, don't talk to me for an hour. I'm getting my sticky notes. And an my hour? Calendar. And my really just an hour. Nice try. Okay. So my might spend the greater majority of the evening marking up catalogs and drinking wine and having sticky notes and fun. That's fun to me. But the reality is how I, I might start with one bundle in that category. And then the next catalog comes in the mailbox. And then I forget about the one I just ordered. So I'm preaching to the choir here. I'm preaching to myself as well to stick with one catalog. Cause I recently refocused on this and I can't tell you how much of a difference it made. I doubled my orders with this one vendor and not only are they happy, but now I get a bigger discount. <clears throat> it's not much, but 5% is five percent i'm just saying when you're ordering twenty thousand dollars five percent's not chump change exactly so even if you're not even if you're ordering 500 and you double it to a thousand and then they say oh you get 10 percent off you guys 10 percent off is 10 percent more in your pocket so think about this and also i want to go back to the knowledge bank thing for a second because um you start with a knowledge bank, you've got to start somewhere to gather catalogs. But once you have access to catalogs, you don't have to have a knowledge bank because you have the framework. You have, um, if you don't have the framework, it's in the wholesale bundle system course that we sell. It's our entire framework that we created for bundle research. And use every it's single like time this. to create bundles. And this is the process that you go through to do your research. And so if you have a catalog, you can do this research process and no matter if it's in your knowledge bank or not, because it's a step-by-step, -step, you do this, you do this, you don't have to have prior knowledge. And we've got proof of that. We, in our Confident Wholesale Bundlers workshops, we actually give random catalog pages. We're not giving pages that's in a knowledge bank that they know. We give them random catalogs, random pages and say, use this to build a bundle and they are able to build successful bundles using the framework, doing the research, using the tools that they have to be able to make bundles without knowledge bank. So think of how much easier when you do know and understand 
that niche, how much easier it is to build those bundles. We've actually pay attention to what people are talking about. We did, there were nurses in one of our workshops and we had a catalog that would have been great to do some medical bundles. And we said, nope, you don't get that catalog because that would be too easy for you. You understand, no, no, the niche. We wanted to give them the, t the challenge of doing it and proving the point that you can do this whether you know, have a niche or not. And the reality is that if you can do it with a completely random niche that you know nothing about, how much easier and faster is it for you when you actually know the niche? It's easier for you to pick products. It's easier to start with the research. So moving on to the next point of how you can work smarter is do you have any current successful bundles or things that have been successful in the past in your store? If you have a successful bundle, what can you do with it? Stop reinventing the wheel. We use this word that we made up called deluxify. And so like literally I was, at the last couple of workshops, we use this like deluxify the bundle that you have. So if you start with something basic and it's doing well, how can you deluxify it to make it bitter, bigger and better, add something else to it, enhance it more. Maybe there's some other options that you can do because you've already done all the work. Just take that research and then apply it next and sell something similar. Right. Whether it is deluxifying it or whether it's a different pattern or different shape or different whatever. You've done a chunk of the research. Now, the person that we're bringing on the show next week actually has done amazing things with this section of bundles. She takes a design, a, a bundle thing that she's decided to go with, and once one works, she builds it out from there. And that is a great way to do bundling because you already do the work. Chris and I do this really well too, if you think Make about it. variations. Are there any other items that will complement this? There are other items in the product line you're using that will make the, the bundle enhancement better. Are there different patterns, colors, styles, product combinations you can make with the same baseline research? Because guess what? That takes the most time. So if you're going to go through the whole framework and you're going to come up with this, now you have this whole set of research that now you can apply to the same thing down the road. You might have to change a couple of keywords, but you've got all your baselines there. It makes it faster. So if you're going to sit down, okay, it's time for me to create a new bundle now. This one's doing well, or it's time for me to spend money on inventory. You're not starting at square one anymore because you've already got some of this preliminary stuff done. It goes faster the more you practice. And, and this so is one of the reasons why when you're bundling, we encourage you to focus in one area, get good at that area. Same thing with any kind of sourcing you do on Amazon, whether it's bundling and wholesale or not. You want to focus on one area because you get to know it really, really, really well. Picking out the next bundle doesn't, isn't as challenging or as hard because you already have this base of information to build those next bundles off of. And look at competing products on addition, for additional opportunities. So if you have a bundle, there's also probably a competing product out there. Look at what they've got. Look at other things that might be another complimentary. This is one of my favorite ways to deluxify bundles. I go to a successful bundle I have, and then I look at what frequently bought together with my bundle. Hello, they're telling me how to deluxify my next bundle. They're saying, we bought this, this, and this. Oh, people are buying my bundle with other things? Oh my gosh, I can just make a bigger bundle. And now I have this option, option A, and now I have option B, which has all the things. And now I'm serving two different customers with the same research and it's way faster. And I love when my customers contact me or leave it in the things. This would be better if, or do you have this with this? Be like, no, but I can. <laughs> It's always a great way to be able to listen to your customer to say, this is a problem that I could solve. If they're asking for it, they're not the only person with that problem. Now, we're going to come into the last piece of this last question we're going to ask you, and this is one place we see people get stuck when it comes to the research process, which is, are you over thinking it. When you're putting this together, are you trusting the facts or are you trusting the feelings? See, and the feelings come up. There are these little still small voices sometimes that you hear that say, oh, what if this doesn't sell? Or are you sure that these are the right components? Or are you sure that this is going to be a hit? Okay. Yes, we all have gut checks, but guess what else? We also have things that do well and don't do well, no matter how well you do the research. The reality is you won't know until you put it out there. We don't sell what's cute. We sell what sells. And there is enough data out there to be able to say, okay, these, these things do well by themselves. This solves this problem. This is a really good bundle idea for this reason. If you could answer those questions, your likelihood of selling that bundle is way better because you've already said, I know who's going to buy this. I know what they need it for. I know what problem it's going to solve for them. And these other components still sell pretty well. And I can make a good margin on this. So 
what's not to dive into. So overthinking and waiting, the longer you wait and hesitate, the more you're going to plant the seeds of doubt. If the facts are the facts, follow them. There's, it's not really, don't overcomplicate it. And that's something that it, it, getting stuck in our heads, being able to take that step back. Sometimes if you find your wheels are spinning and you're, you're the negative talk is getting in there, take a step away. I've had to, there have been research things where I get stuck and hit a wall. I will get up and walk away from my computer for a time because sometimes you just need to take that break when your brain gets in that overthinking cycle. You know, and there's good data to back it up. So how do you work smarter? You trust the data. You do the process, you walk through the steps, and you make sure that your bundle makes sense and solves a problem. Just because it's frequently bought together or that it's matchy-matchy does not mean it's a great bundle. You have to think about the person. This is the mindset shift that we teach people when they're coming from like retail arbitrage, widget type selling, and or running, you know, wholesale spreadsheets through, you know, tactical arbitrage or whatever it is that you're doing out there to just trying to find wholesale items. You don't care about the customer right there. You care about your bottom line. You're looking for, is this going to make profit or isn't it? When you make the bundle shift, you really have to think about who's buying this item and what do they need it for and how they're going to use it. Because if you can do that, that's a golden nugget that no software can ever tell you. It's something you figured out and you brought a solution to somebody and people buy solutions. They don't buy products. It's important to always have the buyer in mind, that customer in mind when you're selecting the components, when you're putting the bundle together, when you're doing that research. Because if you don't have them in mind and you're just looking at all the other pieces of information, you're forgetting the most important point. If your bundle doesn't solve a problem, then nobody's going to buy it because it's not solving a problem. And you want to make sure that the problem that you're solving is the one that people actually need you to solve. There's that piece of it too. So you just you have to be able to think about all these things and think about the customer and what they really want and then working smarter. So what do we need to work smarter? We need to find a niche. In order to find a niche, you have to think about your knowledge bank and think about a place that you need to start. Um, we gave you some resources as far as finding wholesalers and at least getting started with the process. Mommyincome.com slash 100. That's the number 100. That's going to get you that free video that tell, shows you how to find wholesalers by noon today. Like you literally, you can do that. Um, and then we talked to you about using the tools you already have, using the catalogs you already have. Stop shiny object syndrome. Stop collecting catalogs and focus on what you've got. It's also, you know, go looking at what you already have that's successful and building from there. And lastly, it's conquering the overthinking monster that likes to take over your brain and being able to take those small steps forward to help you build the confidence in what it is you're doing. So if you want to learn more about all these things, you want to come to our Facebook group. Again, we've invited you before. We're inviting you again. You need a code word, mommyincome.com slash join us with the code word framework and come and ask some questions there and put your, you know, even come and confess, you know, hashtag confessions and say, look, I'm an overthinker. What advice do you have for me? I'm stuck in research mode and I really need to just execute. And it's okay to confess your fears and just say, okay, I'm having this because other people feel the same. And there's some people that have some advice for you. So making sure that you're connecting with people, you're not alone behind your computer doing this by yourself. Now, make sure that you click the like button, subscribe, get notifications, depending on if you're on podcast or YouTube. We want you to make sure you're here next week because we'll be interviewing a seller, a bundle seller who's been doing amazing things. I mentioned her earlier in this episode. We are going to talk about her success story going from she was at our first ever workshop and she's done amazing things with bundles over the past three years. We want to share her story and some of the struggles that she had with research along the way. So make sure you come back same time, same place next week on the Amazon file. See you next time.